Hello everyone. Um, my name is Warren from Taiwan, and I today I'm going to share uh, how to my journey to uh, investigate the X Z factor and how to uh, extract the lower parallel law from it. Okay. Um, and I'm a uh, Ubuntu community member, and I have uh, somewhat familiar to Bash and C and Snap packaging. Yeah, and. And also, uh, at the same time, there's another talk. So if, uh, th my talk is isn't really that technical. So if you want, want to go to the other talk, I'm ready. OK. So let's uh, introduce uh, what is an XZ factor. Uh, uh, the XZ factor incident is uh, okay. It's a sup supply chain attack that threatens the security of uh, many Linux servers in the world. And this is a combination of uh, social engineering and uh, uh, craft maliciously crafting test data and the uh, code of obfuscation. Uh, yeah, sorry. Okay. Um, unfortunately, uh, right before the uh, malicious code is being included in the visual release, and it is uh, intentionally meant, uh, found by a uh, Developer and it is totally trying to take them down. So, um, what happened just um, from two, 2021 and the um, people named Japan started contributing to the XCU2s project? Uh, and I use Polyps here because it, the uh, these names, all my presence is really, really they have the during no online presence. So, uh, it's very likely it's a fake name, yeah. And uh, since 2022, and there's another uh, alias called Jhar and Dennis, and they send multiple uh, mails to the mailing list to uh, get pressure to the project maintainer and and to uh, suggest them to pass the maintenance to the uh, so-called Japan. And at the 2022. Uh, October and the maintainer uh, just get 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 the uh, uh, original maintainer get the uh, maintainer access to Japan, yeah. And since then, uh, at last year, uh, last year there's another uh, fake identity. They contributed a patch that uh, allows the backdoor to actually work. And in this year's uh, February, the new maintainer he injects uh, malicious code into the project. Uh, it is actually disguised as a so uh, software test file <laughs> and is included in the build process. And um, as for February, they released 5.6.0 and they have a specific uh, crafted. Uh, release archive that uh, have a file that is not in the source repository, uh, which actually uh, extracts the malicious payload from the test data and inject into the program. And uh, long, and they have been pushing uh, multiple digital to include the uh, version that has the malware. And uh, Fortunately, just uh, at the same day, the uh, patch is, is merged. The the the, the security problem is found, and and the distro containers are quickly uh, take down the problem. Yeah. So um, this talk will let you know how to investigate a potential malware on Linux, and especially in a safe manner. I don't want to uh, let your system compromise because you just want in, uh, you are curious to uh, uh, malware. Yeah. And we will also uh, have a take on the generic uh, open source software building process. However, we won't have uh, to inform you how to uh, reverse engineer the actual payload. I don't have the knowledge to show you how to do that. So, so um, and this presentation will likely uh, 
unable to finish on time, so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do skip a few pages. Yeah. So uh, essentially, you need a Docker to do this uh, research. Yeah. And I want to introduce a specific so bash syntax. It is a index array, but the main purpose so for this syntax is that I can add comments to the uh, comment apps, comment options, so you know how, how it will work. Okay. Uh, first, we will create a working directory for our research data. Uh, do not put them in the downloads folder. And we can prepare a, a container or virtual machine to do the investigation. Yeah, and then also on your on your computer. And um, we use a, a Ubuntu container for for the research. So we grab a twenty two o four Ubuntu container and launch it. And um, this essentially uh, mounts the. Uh, working library into the container so you can access it inside and then uh, to minimize the time to download packages and we will use a local archive mirror and um, all these old blocks you can just um, copy and paste into the terminal so uh, at, the, at the end i will show our my slides and uh, write up so you can check it out and in the container, we, we can show first upgrade all the software to the latest version. Uh, this is because uh, even software in containers may have vulnerability, and uh, and a compromised container may have a possibility to uh, let the attacker had escape to the whole system. So for the best, we still need to upgrade our system uh, container. And um, so here's start how to uh, compare what uh, has actually changed between the source repository and the uh, release archive that the uh, bad maintainer has put in published. So we need to first the part the uh, release archive and it is being taken down because of the incident on GitHub. So we can get it back on the Wayback machine. And we can uh, use the PHP signature on the developer's web website to verify that this uh, source archive is actually Japan's source archive. Yeah. And so we can use the new, the new PG utility. And we can acquire Japan's uh, PGP public key from the Wayback machine. And use the and first import the key into your uh, new PG e After importing, you can uh, verify it whether the package is uh, authentic or not. Uh, the warning message is is due to you don't have the complete uh, PGP web address, so you can ignore it. And we can now extract the source archive, and uh, um, it kind of looks kind of like this. Then we can uh, grab a copy of the actual source file in the repository. Uh, we execute use uses git to manage their source code, so we must install git and use git clone to uh, grab the source repository. And we can use uh, the tree utility and um, a couple of different utilities like zip and grab to compare the uh, actual difference between the source tree and the, uh, the uh, file tree in the release archive. Uh, the actual result is kind of like this. Uh, this is the unified zip format and the, uh, the lines with the plus on the front is the lines that have uh, inserted after the change and the minus lines are just are the lines are removed so we can know that uh, the actual re uh, release archive has included some files like the about the ls and ac local.n4 and 
and it had uh, lack, also lack some files like the code file RC file. And you can find that uh, the actual release archive actually have more files than the uh, files in the source repository. And why is it? Uh, this is majorly because the uh, project maintainer will uh, build some files on their machine into the source release archive. It will not directly use the uh, files in the source repository. Uh, this is because that uh, some files in the release archive, uh, there's no, uh, the end user may not have the required software version or even software to build these files. So it was bad to let the project maintainers to generate them. So also the uh, release archive may have some files that is missing from the source repository because uh, the, there are some files that only work uh, useful in development process. So uh, the maintainer will just strip them, strip them out from the release archive. Okay. Um, then we need to uh, make sure how we can generate the same files like the project, project maintainer. So we need to know what uh, software build system AC utils uses and also the dependencies. Um, for, for the first, we need to install a pager program so we can read long plain text documents. And uh, we use the less utility for, to, for the purpose. Um, and an important thing to note is that we do not recommend to use the cat command to read the documents. And this is because uh, there's a tweet and you can see that there's a, a innocent.sh file that has a single echo comment. But if you actually use cat command to run this file, it will print out your uh, password, <laughs> password database. And this is because the uh, file may have some uh, escape codes or just other invisible uh, characters that will affect what you see when you run the cat comment. So uh, you should use the pager to read such file. Okay, um, now we can see the, uh, read the XUTILS installation document. And in the last page, you can use uh, up down to move up down a line, you will switch up page down and uh, press Q to leave. So um, if you read the installation document, you can, you can find that uh, I think you just use the, the new auto tools build system. And building it is essentially the typical configure, make, and make install comments. Okay. And the GNU build system uh, typically include the following packages uh, like AutoCom, AutoMake, and Left Tool. Uh, it may also have some additional like the text or machine later. Um, first, we need to verify the build system, actual build, build system component version that are, uh, is actually used by Jatan to generate the uh, source release archive. Um, this is because uh, we need to uh, compare the versions, the change, the difference between the two versions. We don't want the difference be too much because of the build, build tool version. Um, uh, benign changes from the build, build tools version. So we can verify the uh, autocom version by reading the configure file. There's a, a comment on the script that says uh, it uses autocom 2.72. And automake, you can read the make file in. So, uh, like tool, you can read the um, build box. LT main um, This this one has a special version. It uses 2.4.7.4 one uh, ec 8 f 30 uh, What is it? Uh, if you see the Black Tools uh, Git repository, you will know that uh, it actually doesn't have the 2.4.7 point number version. It actually have 
2.4.7. And the 0.4 uh, suffix, it means that it is the fourth comment after the 2.4.7 version. And if you uh, see the actual comment hash, you will find that it is actually the same comment. Uh, however, there's also some unknown changes because the, uh, there's a 30 uh, suffix after the version name. Uh, so we don't know, do not actually know what uh, uh, what difference is actually in the live code. Okay. And if you read the uh, compiler.ac file, you will also know that SU2 is also using the new test, and you can um, find the version by reading the m4 get test m4 file. So the, in this uh, case, they use the 0.22.4 version. Then we need to, we need to uh, because the distro didn't actually provide these build system, uh, the specific version of these build tools. So we need to build it from source. Uh, and um, I will skip this slide because it really didn't uh, in, in the topic. So simply we just in, uh, download the source archive. Uh, we can verify it using PQP. And then uh, extract the source archive and run the build configuration program. Uh, and if the build configuration program have any errors or warnings, then you can uh, fix it by uh, installing specific packages that provide them. For example, uh, if you run the configure program of Holocom, it will say that it didn't have the M4 software in it, so you can just app install M4. And you can install Max because it's a certain file. So after installation, you can uh, verify whether the uh, Holocom is actually in your system and it is the right version. And I'll skip all these uh, individual build tools, build process. It's not really on topic. Okay, after you install all the uh, right version of the build tools, we can start building the SEU builds com build configuration program. This uh, isn't actually in the source repository, it is uh, built, from, built by the project maintainer and inserted into the uh, release source archive. So we can use uh, the autogen script to build the configuration program and it will also uh, may complain that there is some program it needs to found. Um, for example, it needs the PO48, this program. Um, how to know what package provides that program? We can use the app file software utility to search for it. Um, we can search using the uh, using a regular expression to specify any uh, PO48 file in the uh, bin directories. And after we have successfully generated the build configuration program, we can now finally uh, use the this utility to compare the uh, files in the uh, Git repository and the uh, actual source uh, release version by, by job time. And this part of the result, uh, the this is not that short, but you can have a gist of what's the difference. Okay, and if you uh, read the div, you will find some suspicious changes, like why there is a uh, grab comment searching all the source directory or something. Uh, and this and um, this comment actually expands to like so, and it searches for uh, four consecutive pound symbols followed by five consecutive alphanumeric characters, and then four uh, consecutive pound symbols. Uh, it will actually found, print out the file name uh, that matches the regular expression, and is this particular file 
which is a software test file called bat 3 corrupt lv So it will set this uh, variable to, to the path of the test file. Okay, and in one a six nine five line, it assigns the value to a strange PR comment. Uh, the PR comment essentially it does a translation of from one set of characters to another set of characters. And what does this comment do? It essentially replaces tab to space, space to tab, hyphen dash to underscore, and underscore to hyphen dash. Yeah. So it's kind of like a obfus, obfus. Sorry, I really don't know how to pronounce this word. <laughs> okay. And nine one nine eight seven eight is a sign. Uh, Local, uh, okay, local DRR variable to this one. And uh, GRAM and config make variable actually, uh, we, we, we previous known that it does uh, this specific test files for pass. And it echoes the pass to SED and using a specific S comment to do something. Yeah. Uh, and this SED comment actually. Replace uh, zero or more characters following a error circle to a null string. So the result is actually xz. Um, and this variable is used to hide the usage of the az command. We will see it later. And the 19895 line assigns the locale dr config to the following command, but it did not run it. And um, this and if you previously see the uh, uh, AM config make uh, 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 the GR local DR replace common is actually XD and is actually replaced at a, this place. So it's actually uh, XD dash D common. Okay. Um, and this common is. Uh, Indirectly run in the uh, following line it is actually passed to the uh, current shell, so it is actually run by the shell. Um, back to the SED comment, and this comment is actually a cap comment because it uses a invalid uh, file name to for the SED R comment to read. It essentially is a no op and uh, SED just simply prints the original input file. So it, it is essentially a cat comment. So uh, so it essentially uh, cats the content of this cat file and do a, a character translation. And finally, uh, decompress the result using X, XD. And the decompression result is the following is actually a shell script. <laughs> and um, let's ignore the truth, path truth that uh, for some reason the script author want to very want to check whether the system is Linux. <laughs> yeah, it would work. Um, the following <coughs> code it sets the source directory because the actual actually source directory does not necessarily match the or the working directory the, that runs the configure script. Okay, and the last portion of the script, the following is executed, and um, and this is actually very long, so um, we will just divide and conquer. Um, the i variable is essentially replaced to the eval comment, so we just copy and paste is actually like, like this. And uh, we essentially uh, decompress this good large compressed test file. And the, the many head, head comment is actually uh, doing the doing these things. It drops some bytes and output some bytes and repeat many times for some reason. And and the uh, third com component of the shell pipeline, they use the tail <laughs> command to uh, print 
content of the three four three two one three three byte and four later, and it runs the output to another gr command and do uh, some more character translation. And uh, finally, this uh, data is actually a LCMA one raw stream. So at the at the very last, we use the AC command to decompress this LCMA one log raw stream data. And the result is another short script. <laughs> and um, and this short script is uh, actually pretty long, and 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 it uses. Many things that I don't know, so I could skip up here. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Uh, for example, they use this C processor and G -Aug and the automate and the canoe linker. Okay. Uh, I do you have some time for those? <laughs> and sorry for that. <laughs> okay. Um, at least we have. The internet, so we can find any other one has do the analysis. Yeah, and I really, really recommend this, this article from Russ Fox. And, and uh, reading this article, we can found that uh, this script actually has to implement a update mechanism in case that the project maintainer want to insert another backdoor and you don't, don't want to remove the previous. Uh, backdoor test data, otherwise it will be suspicious. So he actually uh, uh, used the grab comment to search test file that starts with the uh, content start with this one and end with this one, and just cut the content between these lines. Yeah, and uh, it do some ex uh, extraction logic, which uses an RC for like a division function using AWK. And um, finally, uh, we can know that uh, uh, these commands, they finally uh, output this specific object file, which is the actual uh, malware payload that is injected into the XZUtil build process. And we can find that uh, they only target Debian and Red Hat. So they, were, they are searching for a specific packaging uh, characteristic. Okay. Um, that's all for today, and you can check out my write-up, which has all the uh, process I make until I give up, <laughs> and and also this presentation. So, uh, if you have any question, is this slide available to the slide? Slide. I'll put it on the website soon after I finish one. Yeah. And um, I actually have this uh, the same presentation during Costco in Taiwan. And um, there's um, someone that points out a specific thing is that the maintainer actually sabotages a certain uh, linter check uh, using. Uh, CMake, uh, it inserts a single period in one of the lines, and the and the other lines can uh, not work because it's in test error. Yeah. So, any questions? Okay. If no one has any questions, then thank you for your time. <laughs>